Hey everybody out there, my name is Dragnix and this is Corgi Warlock. $6.99 came out on the Steam Store December 3rd. It is developed and published by Xander's Corgi. Obviously a dog made this game, it is Corgi Warlock. But before I begin, want to make sure you guys know this key was obtained from the developer for the purposes of review via key mailer. That won't change my opinion in the end, but you guys should know that because of FTC guidelines. As well as the whole morals thing, you know? Now, Corgi Warlock, as you see, is an indie action game. In particular, it's an indie local co-op game. Now, I did not play the co-op in this game, unfortunately. The person who I usually rely upon, aka my sister, unfortunately she has some exams right now, so I did not get to experience that, so keep that in mind going forward. Now, the object of the game is to get to the right side of the screen via any means necessary to get onto the next area without dying. As you see, I've got a couple of meters there. I will explain them in a little bit. But the first thing I want to talk about is the art style because it is the thing that actually stands out about this game and is probably what made me draw to actually cover the game in question, even though I was offered a key via key mailer. The art style is sort of telling. It does a good job in keeping it simple, but the animation is a good quality for the art in question and for the price in question. I like the artwork of the, of the Corgi. Now there is some weird things that happen in the game and one is coming up right here. I'm gonna jump onto this platform here to get to the next area. No, I'm not. Sometimes it's hard to tell what's in the background. As you see there, the hills are easily to be able to be told by the background there, but sometimes it looks like something is a platform and it's not, unfortunately. That does cause a little bit of a problem for the game, even though it stays on that vertical plane in terms of that bottom um, line right there. But honestly, it doesn't do too bad of a job because mostly you'll be able to figure it out with certain exceptions. Now again, good artwork, and that does appeal to me at the sort of visual level. Now let's talk a little bit about the gameplay. The gameplay is as you see it here. Basically you have your basic spells. You have a fireball with the X button, a Y button shoots a lightning bolt, a B shoots a laser beam, and the right trigger will shoot a specific tornado once you get it. Now when you start the game you only have a fireball and it's only one fireball. As you continue through the game you will get upgrades. And where the game starts to be a little bit weird is the fact that the game's difficulty curve is rather strange. Now, not to say that the difficulty curve is off. At first, I thought this was a kid's game because the game starts off very, very simple and very, very easy. But sooner or later, it kicks up it up a notch and all of a sudden you're having to deal with all the things being thrown at you and you just feel like, okay, wait a minute, it's taking it to the next level at this point. Now, the game never gets difficult, I would say. Even though I have, you know, a little bit of low health here, you'll notice that I have that left trigger, which is a healing spell, and also the LB button, the healing light, which will actually recover my health rather nicely. Now, as you see, we are fighting a boss here. One of the big problems I have with the game, and one of the biggest issues with the game, is its repetitive nature. This boss fight in particular, even though it won't be a blue dragon every time, is rather telling in the mid portion of the game because you do it three or four times. It'll be some creature that throws fireballs in some way like this at you, and you'll see it a little bit later on as well. But the problem is, is that in terms of variety, there's so much they could have done here to, you know, change it up, even if this fireball pattern were to stay, that it really bothered me. Like, introduce an enemy or two that comes from the other side of the screen so that I have to dodge in a different way or just add some different fireball patterns maybe speed them up slow them down unfortunately this quarter sort of repetition really hurts the game in the long run because unfortunately it just feels like you're facing the same enemies over and over and over again within this video you'll see that I am facing a lot of the same enemies even though they introduce a new enemy type or two which is a little bit concerning because there is a good length to this game so far in terms of the levels in question. I have played about three hours at this point, and I think I'm on ch yeah, chapter five, as you see there. I think there are nine or 10 chapters from what I remember reading, and if, there, if I'm wrong about that, I apologize, but I think there's a lot of, of, of gameplay here. And unfortunately, because of the repetitive nature, it will get boring rather quickly. Now, what's interesting here is that while the gameplay is boring, it does a good job in terms of the mechanics. The balance of the spells in particular, the cooldowns on the spells make a lot of sense. As you see there, my fireball is able to be fired very fast, but like the lightning spell takes a little bit longer to charge. The light, the 
sort of stream of fire takes a bit longer to charge and it does a little bit more damage but they do have specializations the lightning in particular does very good against a lot of enemies but maybe not a single enemy now on the flip side of that I don't see a lot of good single enemy sort of spells in terms of, okay, I want a spell that only does damage to one enemy. I have the Corgi power, which is used to like really deal a lot of damage, but it damages a lot of things. I would have liked to see a little bit more variety there. Now, it's weird. The gameplay works and it's balanced reasonably but again it's sort of counteracted by the variety problem now when the game gets going and you feel like the game is sort of mixing it up on you even though it's very basic and it won't play to the strengths of hardcore fans of the action genre out there it does it at a basic level that's nice for people who just want to sort of relax again the art style helps this because it sort of feels like you're just you know slaying back sort of slaying enemies for no good reason now controls work perfectly fine either with the keyboard or with the Xbox controller in question. I did have a little bit of trouble with the Steam controller getting it to work, but if I reconfigured it, it would be okay at this point. But the Xbox controller works perfectly fine, which most people will have if they have a controller. Keyboard works fine, it's just that this kind of indie action game, in particular with all the buttons in question, it just feels more natural to a, a console and aka a controller in question because of the simplicity of the spells and it just feels like more of a pickup game rather than sitting there for a couple of hours and sort of grinding at it. Now, enemy variety is an interesting problem too. While it does introduce new enemy types in terms of artwork, you have your basic types, like the guy here who just sort of runs at you. There's nothing really different. This guy was introduced on this level and I didn't appreciate it because, okay, a bouncing boulder we hadn't seen up to this point, but most of them will either just throw some projectiles at certain speeds at you or will just sort of run at you. I did want to see some movement in the vertical direction with some enemies though. All the enemies, when they dashed at you, see to stay on the same horizontal plane aka the running on the actual sort of um uh, surface there but in the end they didn't do anything in terms of jumping with some exceptions like the spiders will jump once in a while but they'll ne they never feel like a threat the reason being is that like the spiders for example take one hit and they're dead I wanted enemies that actually did that with more than one hit in terms of oh I have to really be concerned that I can't just throw a fireball at them you see that mini boss fight was very similar to the boss fight that we had earlier. Yeah, that's what I'm saying about the variety. It needs it needs a little bit of help. Now you do get these stores here and I really actually think the stores aren't really necessary. Yes, of course, I'm replenishing my items in question here and I feel like they could have been done easily with drops, but I feel like the the store system in particular makes the game way too easy. Like I have a full healing power here I really shouldn't need it at this point. There are no difficulty levels from what I've seen in the game, but honestly, I felt like it just made it a way, way, way too easy. This game sort of brings up the argument of cost versus sort of long longevity because like I've said before, the variety isn't there and actually hurts the game in the long run. I got tired of playing this game. I really did. And despite the fact that it introduced new mechanics, it took a while to get to some of those new mechanics in question. Now, the game seemingly provides, you know, a couple of a, a couple good hours of fun. And for a $7 price tag, it seems like the content portion is there. But really, if the content's sort of lackluster and actually hurts it overall, is that actually worth it? And I don't think it is in this case. I think if the game would have cut down a little bit of the content and introduced it more at a rapid pace, I think it would have done a lot better to help out the lack of variety in question. Again, I can tell that this person wasn't a game designer by trade. This person actually was started by uh, a person who worked with Pixar, DreamWorks, and Sony, hence the rather nice artwork and almost the ridiculous designs of some of these characters that are still basic but do a very good job. Now you do run into situations where the game introduces a little bit of story, but really the story is just sort of background characters saying something about the world or about the corgi who's sort of liberating them. It doesn't have a sort of set narrative in terms of like actual storytelling. It's just sort of, you can pass them, they'll say something. You really don't pay attention to it, honestly. It's not really worked into the gameplay that well sure like before a boss fight maybe the big spider will say something to you but it's very similar to old nes games where it was like oh it's telling a story basically in in 
today's modern gaming environment it just doesn't do the job in my opinion and it could have done it a lot better like here the corgi is here protect the spider mother that would have been really nice if the it was a you know text box and you know the actual person was saying it as opposed to it being in the background again some immersion problems with the gaming medium here at a basic level now you can run into situations like this where you have to keep on going back and forth with the controls because you don't want to lose space on the screen but I never felt threatened by it either. Like, every time that I got into a bad situation, I just walked a little bit back. And sure, enemies come from the back at times. I wish that was more often as well, because that would have really helped. Now, remember I said the boss fights in this game were very similar to each other. Then it introduces something like this. Okay, I want to see more of this, where you've got them putting a constant stream of enemies on screen and you're putting the fireballs at different levels here you're forcing me to change up my tactics at this point use my healing power using my shield that will take projectiles okay do more of this as opposed to the four boss fights that felt all the same up to this point again when i talk about the variety in games and trying to get the most out of your money don't extend your gameplay for the sake of st extending gameplay let the gameplay speak for itself and don't repeat elements that often like this especially in a row i think this game's sort of structure hurt it in the end because i feel like if it would have done a little bit better of organizing it it would have done a lot better for me in the long run again gamers especially on the pc platform ex expect a good amount of variety in your game and a good amount of action out of your game but in terms of repetitive nature i don't think they necessarily go for that unless if it's a sandbox or something along that lines i fast forwarded a little bit to a different boss fight in question again change things up a little bit here with like the fist coming from the side although i will say to the game designer in question this was not hard at all the fist was too slow moving it didn't cause you to really do anything any differently and the fireballs didn't have an impact those fireballs in question that you're throwing at me right now need to take a lot of damage they need to really damage me in question here or knock me back into the pit really i could i could sort of tank that damage and the fist wouldn't really mean it make that big of a difference all i had to do is stay away from the fist and the fist is so slow it really doesn't help again game design problems here and i don't expect a sort of new person in the industry to get that but i feel like you needed to talk to people and sort of you know get their understanding of where the game genre needed improvements on again a lot of people will be willing to give you feedback in the community it's one of the nice things about gaming if you put out a beta there or something i feel like this game really needed it in the end corgi warlock is actually a game I could recommend for people who are looking for a game to play with their kids, I would guess. It is a little bit more difficult than I would want it to be, but I feel like with all the powers and all the information, and especially if you're an experienced gamer, you can sort of play with them and still enjoy it because it does have a, a visual art style that's nice. It does have an element where they feel like they're doing something by throwing all the fireballs and sort of rapid spamming it. Is it the greatest of games? No. Does it do its job okay? Yeah. Can I recommend it for people who are probably watching the channel? Probably not. It's probably not what you're looking for. And while it is a nice art style, it does have some strengths. And if you liked what you've seen so far, it's you're going to get more of it. Again, part of my problem is the variety here, but it does work. All right, this is Dragonic signing out. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day. Again, I will leave my Steam review in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz, and I will see you all later. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you want to see more content like this, you can hit that subscribe button in the middle of the screen right there. In the top left and top right is the last video I did and a related video to this one. I do have a Twitter handle in the bottom left and in the bottom right I have a Facebook group. You can click on the Google Plus icon to get more content and subscribe via Google Plus. And as always, thanks for watching and keep on gaming.